Okay guys, so this is another video about Linux, um, the very popular Linux Ubuntu, on this PowerBook G4 Titanium, to be very specific, it's a 15 inch PowerBook, it's my daily driver laptop, um, and I just recently installed Linux on it, so obviously I'm kind of a dual booting guy, I booted this, uh, next to Leopard, that is always 10.5 and uh, you know I was not expecting, first I did that just for fun, you look how it runs, but I was very very uh, shocked by the performance uh, I was not expecting such a good performance from this old computer so you must kind of say this is kind of old now, it's from 2004 it's using the PowerPC architecture which is well, in Apple's eyes, dead as hell, which I won't say, but, you know, uh, it, it, it's not a fast a fast processor at all compared to modern processors, but, you know, that for the only reason it still supports the latest and greatest or the, well, more recent version of Ubuntu, obviously it doesn't run Ubuntu 13 anymore. I actually don't see why there's barely any difference, so... Yeah, it's kind of a troll, but you know, I don't really need see a problem in that for the next couple of three to four years. Um, when it comes to support, I believe it will end in well next year, but that doesn't mean nothing runs on it anymore. I mean, come on, this is by no means no operating system. So, uh, to get actually to the point, this is an old computer and Apple has unsupported that a long time ago, in 2007. Uh, no, actually not. When did Snow Leopard come out? 2009, there you go. 2009, um, version 10.6 of Mac OS X doesn't run on here anymore. It requires an Intel it's processor, which makes absolutely no sense as well. But, you know, I kind of come clear with that now. So, when version 10.5 runs on here. Um, and uh, back then that power PC kind of thing wasn't so bad yet you still had tons and tons of programs because well the computers weren't that old y yet so Apple decided to leave them down or leave just kill them Ubuntu didn't think so until version 13 as I told you so they supported that natively on power PC G4 computers I believe even G3 computers, but I believe that ended... No, it actually still worked for this version, which... Well, is more than useless on a G3 processor, I tell you that. That is a way slower processor. So this is a G4 single-core processor. It, sh it shows it doesn't show it here, it just sa shows 7447A. I believe that's the version number of the CPU or something like that. I'm no expert when it comes to that. And it's a L... L... TVEC supported, that means unknown, well, un that means unknown model, so it kind of works with it, I guess, <laughs> just doesn't know what kind of processor it is. And uh, we got a gigabyte of RAM, which again, I was very shocked that this thing actually is so snappy for only having a gigabyte of RAM and no processor with not the best graphics you can get, and doesn't actually it does actually not even uh, show you the, the graphic card and says it's uh, unknown but as you can see this is rather smooth and smooth and uh, a, a non working graphic card in Ubuntu looks different I've had that happening on my Fujitsu computer which has an absolutely totally craptastic graphic card for its damn age and you know technology so this works actually, this is meant to work so, had I problems with installing this thing? Yes, I had. But let's actually go over the good things you will get. Um, it actually works right out of the box with, I told you, the graphics, um, with the kind of power management things. Um, one thing's still not working when it comes to that, but I will tell you that later. Um, it actually worked pretty much with everything, with the mouse, with the keyboard, with all the ports on it. The only thing that did not work right out of the box was the wireless card, which I had to do some research to install it. That was a package I had to install called 
kind of FW cutter, something like that, which installs pretty much a driver and after re reboot it will work, which actually happened then. Because I, as you can see, I'm connected to the internet right there with it in, with its internal graphic card, ah, uh, graphic, <laughs> wireless card. And if a computer actually has got a graphic card, uh, what am I talking? A uh, wireless fucking card. If a computer actually has a wireless card, I want to use that darn thing because that is a very, very important piece of hardware. And I don't want to have one of these pieces of shit sticking out of the side of my laptop, even though it's got a wireless card. So I did some research and I could get that working. It wasn't that bad when you know how to, but that's only always the thing on a hardware installation when it doesn't work on Linux. It's just, at least just like that. And actually a lot of stuff worked, as I told you. The Bluetooth worked, uh, all the, the junk, which I don't actually use on here, worked. Um, but, I cannot, for God's sake, get the battery percentage working. I don't know why. And that is a very, very bad thing. I can check the, the, the battery status via the terminal, uh, but that's just annoying as hell. And I, I don't know, that's very, very kind of shit that it doesn't show you that right now it's plugged in. But when it's just the battery runs down and the computer just kind of shuts down and then you know the battery is, is, is gone. That, that kind of sucks, so that's why I don't really use that yet. When I'm on the go, then I use OS X. That kind of sucks. Um, but again, Linux is just on here for testing and doing some simple tasks. So, what are the positive things that we'll get on a Linux installation? Or in a Ubuntu 12 or 11 upwards installation because that has got a nice Unity desktop, 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 which is very resource intensive compared to the old Genome desktop. But I think that is worth it because you will get a very OS 10 ish feeling with that kind of dock, which they call starter, but I will just call it dock. You you will very, very get similar to the, well, using OS 10 as I already told you in the preferences. So what are the good things you will get on Linux? You will get a ton of software, like uh, LibreOffice, FileZilla, and all that jazz, which actually works for OS 10 as well. I will just go into Software Center, but there is quite a lot of stuff and what I actually like is that there is kind of a Mac App Store just with Ubuntu, the Ubuntu Software Center, which is pretty damn awesome. And there you will get a lot, a lot, a lot of software, which all runs on your computer, unless you add some, you know, uh, some just some sources that don't work like Skype does, which is a very big throwback on using Linux on here. Um, but you will see all these things, they actually work on PowerPC. And I just don't get why it's not working now with 10 because it's the same, pretty much the same thing. It's Unix and it works on its old architecture and I don't know if Apple's doing that control-ish thing. But all this stuff, I tried out a lot of this and pretty much everything launched. Slow, but it some of them is very slow, like these video editors um, and stuff like that, but all of them actually work. They actually boot it up and, and work. So I cannot say if all of these actually work on PowerPC because I didn't install the whole thing. <laughs> um, but most of it works, and actually some very important stuff works, like LibreOffice is still the latest version supported by from PowerPC. And that works, and all this thing works on here. Uh, VLC, which is very useful, works. Um, some just um, basic like GIMP or something like that works. Uh, a lot of, lot of, lot of good stuff. So when it comes when it comes to to office stuff, this this is perfect for using. Uh, you will get a ton and ton and ton of stuff. Um, yeah. What I also want to point out is, on here, um, you will also get communicating with other computers a lot easier to work than on OS X. I don't know why, but it is sh this thing just does not want to connect to, for example, my Dell computer, which is a Windows machine. Um, 
this just doesn't want to connect on OS 10 Leopard, but it does on Mountain Lion, so I, I don't know if that's not broken on, um, I mean, well, the, the Leopard software. Uh, also connects to my iMac and stuff like that. Well, that is not broken because it's not on now, but uh, all this actually works. That is a big, big, big plus point. That is very nice. So, um, really, this is a nice, smooth operating system. Uh, it's not always 100% smooth like this. This doesn't go snappy or something like that. But it actually is pretty decent for being that old and it's working great and stuff like that. Uh, I just left this performance on here a bit. And not only that, I'm kind of an up-to-date browser guy, which, well, it's because I'm like a little into web development and HTML5 and stuff like that. This requires just a new browser and on here, look at that. We're in 24.0. Look at that, that's a power PC computer running this thing that is not capable of doing that on, um, well, OS 10. So, if you want up-to-date browser stuff, you need to use Linux, you just need to. Not a big problem for me, because the stuff I do still works in the Aurora Fox. I hope for any little longer now, but that won't be the problem. Uh, do I recommend installing this? Well, first of all, you want to get a lot of software that people actually talk about that works, like Skype. It doesn't work on, on Linux on a PowerPC computer. It does work on an Intel, but not on this architecture. You want to get Dropbox. That is the stuff I actually hate. You want to get all these fancy cloud services like iCloud, obviously, because it's Linux. And uh, the Google, uh, how it's called... Google Drive or Microsoft, uh, well, it's kind of obvious too, uh, but all of these are not going to work, even though they would, some of them would work on Ubuntu, it just doesn't work on uh, this architecture. Next, you want to get, well, like Photoshop or Microsoft Office on this thing when you're using Linux, which is obvious too. Uh, because it's Linux and that just doesn't run on here like Adobe Photoshop or um, what is Microsoft Office 2008 which still runs on here not working <laughs> because it's Linux so unfortunately you will also not be able to install Wine which is a Windows em emulator which works very decent and uh, that is uh, well, not working because of PowerPC. So, um, you can't actually, before I say I recommend it or not, you can't actually optimize the, the crap out of this thing if you're using Linux. It doesn't even have to to be Ubuntu, it can be Debian and stuff like that as well. Um, you can install LXD, that is called Lightweight X11 Desktop Environment, which is a very crap looking but very fast it's actually not that bad looking it's not, not looking like windows 95 or something like that it's just a very fast and lightweight environment just the opposite of unity pretty much uh, but you want to get this nice smooth feeling with the, the, the whole starter icons and that nice search thing there which I really like uh, the kind of spotlight imitation there this is not there. You won't you won't get a lot of it will be kind of more like using Windows. You can have a menu and there you can choose from. But it is very fast. I used to have it on here in a previous installation. I want to actually reinstall it. I, I don't know you can install squeeze as well, which is looking like Genome 3, but a lot less resource intensive and uh, better looking than LXDE, but uh, LXDE is just the king when it comes to uh, lightweight and, well, easy for the system and stuff like that. And not only that, you can actually choose between that. If you don't know, if you log out, and you can choose between the desktop environments you want to have on Linux, which is pretty damn awesome. So, if you do something like me when you're... When you, when you're um, running OS 10 on the second partition or Linux on the second partition I would say on this particular machine it is not really worth it running the Linux as the primary OS simply for
for me, simply because the software I need is just not running on it. If you actually just into Office stuff, we can still use OS X, so there's no need to upgrade to Linux there. If you like it more, that then you can do it, but why didn't you buy a Mac anyway? <laughs> and um, it's kind of a love-hate thing. I don't see why I would use that as a primary OS. I just like it, I want to use it and just modify it a little bit. Um, but for me, it doesn't really make a difference. I can do pretty much all this stuff or even more on OS X. But you must decide for yourself. It does run a little slower than Leopard does, which is, well, kind of obvious since it's a very recent version. But it's by no means slow. Uh, I cannot say it's not like using Windows 7 or Pentium 3 computer where you're half dying to wait for load to load something, uh, or even Windows XP. It's it's actually pretty snappy for yeah being on this old computer. So for example, if you have got a Power Mac G4 MDD with let's say two gigs of RAM and a decent graphic card, this will this will be awesome on Ubuntu, and then you can doable with, with Leopard and you're gonna have an ultimate cool machine but on here it's just not worth doing that but for geeks like me and well that that is nice you see actually I can talk to Linux computers uh, on you know OS 10 as well but not to Windows that just doesn't work on Leopard for some reason or it's just my configuration stuff like that so all in all I didn't show you a lot obviously I can because then I'm gonna talk forever um, if I can get it working, I will throw another Linux on here and another partition, but I'm very afraid this is not going to work for a sound, first, of, first of all, because Linux doesn't want to have that on an install or whatever, erase it or just use the largest memory crap, or it's just going to have a ton of problems, or the, f the hard drive is going to be too small, so that's going to be the actually the... the, the the most annoying thing then. So, all of this stuff worked. The only problem I had was the wireless card. That is a long video, god damn it. I'll just shut it down. Uh, I cannot say if I recommend it. I have actually not used it long enough, but my first impressions are pretty good. So, yeah, tell me what you think of Linux if you want to. Um, if you're using it on OS 10 or Linux or whatever you want to. I will say goodbye and uh, I will see you in the next video.